Hello, welcome back to the channel of nonsense. We've made it, we've done another year. And I just want to put out one last video in 2022 to say thank you to you for all of your support this year of all the videos I've done, all the cars I've driven, also all the motorbikes I've ridden if you subscribe to my bike channel. Um, so I want to give you a special festive treat. Usually I come to the lay-by of mud in nice cars, supercars. No one ever thinks I'm doing anything dodgy because I'm in a nice car, uh, but today, in the spirit of honesty and openness and being a good YouTuber, I'm going to show you the only car in this world that has my name on the registration documents. It's, uh, it's my Honda Jazz. Yeah, yeah, you didn't really think I had any credibility anyway, did you? I've got none now. Let's go. We're going to talk about the year. I'll do a quick review of the Jazz and just wrap up 2022. Thank you. <laughs> You're judging me so hard. I can feel the comments already. Car journalist drives a Honda Jazz. Yeah, uh, there's a story. There's a story behind this car. This is a 2009, I think it is, Honda Jazz. I think it's a 1.4 or 1.3 and a half, something like that. And I've had this for a year now. Uh, I, got, I got given this. This didn't cost me anything, thanks to the extreme generosity of my mother-in-law because at the end of 2000, what was last year, 2021, I'd just lost my job at Drive Tribe. I'd kind of slightly been relying on having press cars all the time, but with two young kids, that's not a great idea. And I just didn't have a car and I was in between jobs. She was trading up to a new Honda Jazz, which she bought through Kazoo. Boo, buy your cars from Motorpoint. Anyway, and uh, she gave this to me and my other half, her daughter, Kat. Um, we're gonna call her Kat because that's her real name. But anyway, um, so yeah, this car, has been used not an awful lot this year, but it cost me nothing. But it is genius in so many ways. I'm actually a little bit in love with it, which is quite sad. Um, first of all, let's talk about the condition of it. I would not say it's an awful condition. I would say it's in pretty good condition. If you look at it from over here, it's, uh, it's not got any bumps or scrapes around here. It's got nice blue bodywork, which if it wasn't gray and drear, would be uh, quite nice. But then we get around the other side. Unfortunately, just before my mother-in-law got rid of it, a white van drove into the side of it. So this side is completely kiboshed, lots of white scrapes, but that has its advantages because, believe you and me, um, having a beaten up jazz makes um, other road users treat you with a bit of caution, which is quite nice. And uh, mother half, Kat, she has been getting back into driving. She passed her license test rather about 13, 14 years ago, but hasn't really had cause to drive since because we all lived in London for a long time. So she's been getting back into driving in this. And believe you me, this is a great kind of learner car because scrapey old jazz people are going to get out of your way or just accept the fact that you're a bit cautious. You might be a bit doddery at times. So <laughs> it does have its advantages. And when I'm driving it, you can merge in turn with real fury on brand new Range Rover drivers because you clearly don't give a crap about your own car. But yeah, it is lovely. So I do some reviewy bits. Um, the Honda Jazz, it came out in 2000 and something. It's great. This one costs nothing. Uh, comes with a range of engines and an awful CVT gearbox. This one's a manual. It's basically a Honda Civic Type R. Yeah, it's basically an EP3 Type R that has been shot in both kneecaps. It's only got about 70 horsepower, but for reasons we'll get onto in a minute. I bloody love it. Let's have a look at the interior. It is a real feast of, um, well, I was just gonna say naughties. Yeah, naughties Japanese-ness. Let me just brighten you up a bit. Look at that. Got orange bits on the dials. They've just gone out. Thanks, Honda. Basically an S2000. Manual shift, basically a DC2 Integra. Lovely infotainment system there. Uh, Elaine, if you want it back, I think I've got your Wham CD that's been left in there. It's got a glove box. It's got a little storage bit under there with some uh, rags in it because the windscreen gets wet on the inside. It's got all those lovely old car problems, even though it's not actually that old. To be honest, it is quite nice. And the main thing is you can fit child seats in the back of it. The Jazz I've always admired because it does that thing where it's a small car, but you can fit lots of stuff in it. Look, I'll show you the boot. I think there's a child seat in the boot there with. I haven't stolen it. But yeah, the boot is, <laughs> it's amazingly big. 
for such a teeny tiny car. But that's boring. I'm going to jump in, go for a drive. If it's not too dark, I might do this bit tomorrow and talk to you about why I love it and about the year I've had and the year that's coming up. Did my autofocus catch that? But anyway, let's go. It's jazz time. Are you still watching? Probably not. Oh. VTEC, yo! Not much VTEC. Right, totally continuity, Batman. I'm not where I was a minute ago. I'm actually a day later. It's Christmas Eve Eve. And uh, yeah, time to tell you about what it's like to drive the Honda Jazz and my plans for next year. And Helen Channel has gone this year. Hopefully you can hear me because cabin refinement is probably not the Jazz's strong point. It's only got five gears. And when you sit at 70 miles an hour, it's quite buzzy. Even at 40, like I'm doing now, it's, uh, it's a bit noisy, but it's fine. This car was free. This car was free up to a point because I had to get it through its MOT. And you know, a Honda is going to fly through its MOT like a greased python slipping between your thighs but unfortunately it needed some work doing the handbrake cables needed replacing the back caliper needed replacing on the right hand side it needed the headlights polished which i kind of knew i bought the stuff to do it but then didn't have time to do it so yes how much do we think it costs to get on the jazz through an mot yeah 600 quid <laughs> Admittedly, most of that was labor. Turns out, if you live in Surrey, labor is about 100 quid an hour, even at an MOT garage, which is more than I used to pay for my Ducati servicing. That made me sad, but to be honest, it's okay. It drives better than ever, and my other half can use it to get back into driving. In fact, me putting this through the MOT is her Christmas present. Who said romance is dead? I MOT'd a knackered old jazz. Merry Christmas, darling. Um, so yes, yes, it's not free anymore. In fact, I've only done 600 miles in this car this year. So it's a pound per mile just from the MOT alone. And next year, it'll need some new tires. And oh my goodness. However, I don't mind spending on it because it's got under my skin a bit. You might look at Jazz and think, oh, that's a grandma car. And uh, admittedly, my mother-in-law is a grandma and she's had jazzes but so that is true however it's quite fun to drive obviously it's got no power but the gearbox the manual gearbox is really nice and you can get up 70 miles an hour and have fun but it's the chassis the chassis actually feels all right you can like bung it into a corner i wish i had some better tires on it and it will grip and go around and uh yeah not understeer which is surprising so yeah I do like it and I kind of want to keep it part of the family and in a few years time when I'm not paying a million pounds a month for childcare fees I quite fancy doing something stupid to this like putting a Type R engine in it I've seen a few people do it and it just looks quite entertaining won't fix the bodywork I'll leave that as is I'll leave the knackered alloy wheels on it might stick some decent rubber on it and a Type R engine that could be fun don't hold me to that that might be a rogue promise but yeah, the Jazz is, is quite fun to drive, actually. And there's also something to be said, massive cliche incoming, about driving a slow car quickly or trying to drive it quickly. I'm talking about keeping momentum across roundabouts. You can heel and toe in it, by the way, really easily. It's a lot of fun. And I think, you know, there's something to be said about getting in a normal car and maintaining momentum across roundabouts around corners rather than, you know, getting in your M3 and blasting out of corners on a surge of torque and wheel spin. Doesn't really do that. So yeah, it takes me back to learning to drive, frankly, and I quite like it. What more do you really need? And I know I'm in a fortunate position on this channel to drive lots of nice things, but all new cars are expensive. And I reckon there's a lot of people out there at the moment in the UK and across the world struggling financially so what I would say is if you do need a car that isn't huge, that can do lots of family stuff, the Jazz isn't a bad shout, especially if you can get one for free, sorry. Um, so yeah, cost of living crisis relevant car. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about the Honda Jazz. YouTube, this year has been, I think, the best year yet for my pokey little Tim Rody Drive Stuff YouTube channel. I've not done as many videos as in previous years because getting access to cars is a bit harder when I don't have the weight of drive tribe behind me. And also, I've got a full-time day job. That was a big puddle of water. So I haven't done as many as I'd like. I think I've only done 50 videos this year. 
which is slightly less than one a week. I've done another 50 on the motorbike channel. So in, in total, I've been busy, but not as busy as I would like. But yeah, we should talk about some of the cars. This year has been the year that I doubled down on doing normal cars. At Drive Tribe, I always did performance cars. And to be honest, they didn't do very well on YouTube. So at the turn of the year, a year ago, 12 months ago, I decided I was gonna try and just do boring cars because they're interesting to me now, as I keep saying, being a dad of young kids and all the rest of it. And I just think there's something about doing reviews of ordinary cars without being boring and trying to be entertaining at the same time. And at some point this year, a little switch flicked in my head. And oh look, I'm getting take, overtaken by a Range Rover who doesn't want to do 30. Yeah, I decided I want to try and do normal car reviews, but focus on trying to be entertaining as well as getting the facts across. So hopefully I've vaguely achieved that. Uh, you can tell me in the comments how boring and unfunny I am. But yeah, that was my aim. In terms of cars I've driven, that I like, the standout car of the year is dead straightforward for me. It is, rather predictably, Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. The car that gave me a headache within half an hour. I still think about that car, about the fact that it likes to wheel spin everywhere. It feels razor sharp and it makes the mother of all induction noise. You don't even need to whittle on about that anymore. Whitter on about that anymore. That was my car of the year. If you can afford one, I think they're 200 odd thousand pounds now, if you're allowed to buy one, go and get one. I preferred it to the 911 GT3 Touring. Oh, that's an unpopular opinion, I think. But yeah, the GT3 Touring kind of left me cold after driving the GT4 RS. Uh, most successful car of the year in terms of YouTube, uh, in terms of numbers, views, it was that Kia Sportage that I reviewed a year ago, but I didn't put the video out until start of 2022. And that did like 350,000 views. It was my biggest video ever. And that was responsible for me getting to drive a lot of the cars I got to drive this year, because it proved I could get views occasionally. Uh, second to that, things like Suzuki Ignis, and then the Skoda Superb video that I put up a few weeks ago. That was super boring, but 70 odd thousand of you have watched it, which is huge for me. So big thank you for that. Now I'm gonna wrap up by talking quickly about what's coming up next year, 2023. And January is actually looking quite busy. I'm gonna be in the YouTubes quite a lot. Um, obviously I've got the Motorpoint stuff coming on. That's gonna kick up a gear and be very much more interesting next year than it has been this year. Um, but on Tim Rohde Drive stuff, I'm starting the year with the Toyota, is it the BZ4X? The electric Toyota thing. I'm just curious to see what Toyota's approach is to a proper electric car rather than fanning about. Um, then I've got a sensible family saloon review coming called the BMW M5 CS. I know it's really old hat, but uh, I just wanted to drive one. So I've got one of those for a few days to review. And then, Something I'm quite excited about, I don't know if you will be, the Volkswagen ID Buzz. Yes, the electric van from VW. I've got that coming for a week as well. So I'm going to be testing that as a family car, putting it through its paces and seeing if I like it, because I've heard some mixed, uh, mixed things about that. But anyway, those are the immediate plans. The motorbike channel will continue as well. So if you're into two-wheel stuff, search for Tim Rohde Rides Motorbikes. And uh, yeah, you'll delight in some more videos there. Um, I might go out in a bit to film a Christmassy motorbike video. There's a 90% chance I will get home and think, oh, it's nice and warm in here and dry. I don't really fancy going out on a bike in this weather. But anyway, I'm waffling. Thank you very much for watching this slightly strange video on this slightly strange channel. Here's to more nonsense next year. It's all going to get more professional. Production values are going up. And those two things were a lie. So I shall see you then. Have a great 2023, everyone go and drink some alcohol or not eat some mince pies though i've clearly started already thank you and i will see you on the other side goodbye